Good evening. I'm speaking right into the microphone. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Jane Williams. I'm the city attorney. And I am one of the two council appointees. Uh, I, along with the city manager, Chris Zapata, are the two employees at the city council. Uh, I'm assisted by uh, assistant city attorney, Rich Pierota, uh, and we are also supported for full legal services by the law firm of Myers Nave. I wanted to give a little description of the structure of uh, the city government, particularly as it relates to the relationship of the city council and the city attorney. The city council, as you know, is a legislative body, and the city council is the city attorney's client. So the city council as a body, not individuals of the city council or any of the public officials, are individual council uh, clients. The city council as a body acting through uh, public processes is the client of the city attorney and the city council as a body holds the what is called the attorney client privilege on behalf of the city. So all of the actions that uh, under, are undertaken by the city are undertaken through and by and through the city council. The city attorney is, under the charter, the chief legal advisor for the city. And we work with the city council and the city manager and staff. Although the city council is the client, it does not mean that we do not interface and work directly with individuals. Um, we do that all the time and we work with the city department heads, the city staff, and work with individual council members. But any decisions that are made are made by and through the city council as a body. Some of the functions that we perform, um, couldn't put them all on one, on one slide, but we of course defend the city in litigation. And we also um, uh, are proactive in initiating litigation, particularly in some actions as code enforcement and some other actions where the city is in fact the plaintiff in the lawsuits. We provide counsel to the city on all aspects of municipal operations, procurement and transactions, uh, write or review proposed ordinances, resolutions and policies, write and review or assist in the negotiation of contracts, memorandum of understandings, labor agreements, uh, or other agreements. And we also do um, a lot of training and update uh, not only the city staff, but the city council and the public officials and members of boards and commission on legal issues that affect their operations and provide uh, ethics and conflict of interest and open meeting training pursuant to Assembly Bill 1234 that was enacted a few years ago that requires that public officials undertake ethics training, and I'm sure that many of you in this room have gone through that ethics training right here in this, uh, in this room. So you will hear from the various department heads about their projects and their initiatives that they're undertaking, um, and, uh, but I'd like to say, and it's not in any uh, way to kind of toot the horn of the city attorney's office, but everything that basically comes through the city operation is touched in some way or another by the legal department to make sure that it's compliant with laws, policies, and um, of course can be successfully implemented. The work that we perform uh, in the city attorney's office and also what the departmental staff uh, undertakes and public officials within the city must be performed within the authority of the myriad of, fate of federal, state, and local laws. And those, as you know, change dramatically and rapidly every year. So we have to keep up with all of the laws and the court decisions. And it's in, within this context that uh, we perform our services, but we also perform um, our services within the general authority of the city charter. San Leandro is a charter city, and there's 120 charter cities within uh, the state of California. 
the rest of the cities within the state are called general law cities, and they're um, prescribed by the uh, provisions of the government code. But San Diego is one of those cities, as a charter city, that um, has a city charter, and I call it kind of the constitution of a city. And the laws that are set forth in the city charter are adopted by the voters of the city of San Leandro and can only be amended by a vote of the people. So the city charter is the operational document of the city. Um, these powers uh, are called municipal, municipal powers. And among those are things like the qualifications for holding office and duties, local elections, public contracting, adopting ordinances, taxation powers, and we call general police powers, such as land use uh, authority and public safety. Um, these powers are vested and carried out by the city council, as I indicated, as a public body, and the city council must operate pursuant to what is known as the Brown Act, and those are meetings that are noticed and open to the public, and the actions of the council are taken by vote of the body, either by motion, ordinance, or resolution. Again, training and advice and counseling to the city council members and the staff by the city attorney's office is a very critical and ongoing uh, task that we perform. And it's very important so that we can ensure that the projects and the initiatives that are undertaken are undertaken appropriately and are legally compliant so that they can be successful. So with that, you'll hear some of these successful projects as I turn it over to 